Hi everyone, this video is about the last three chapters of your workbook. It's about the creativity component, which starts on page 117. It is about everything that goes on your trifold board, which starts on page 134. This is the chapter that discusses exactly what you need to do before turning it in on March 2nd. And the last section, which is about the oral presentation section. So I'm actually going to spend most of this video talking about the creativity component as well as what goes on the trifold board. The oral presentation can be done after you uh, turn in your trifold boards on March 2nd. So you have a good 12 days before March 14th to work on your note cards and to prepare your oral presentation so that when you do present in the gym, you will be very prepared. You will be speaking very clearly and if effectively um, to communicate your ideas and your message with your visitors and your audience members. But before we can get to that point, we first need to complete our project. This is the fun part. Are you guys ready? Exploration through creativity. This is chapter nine, and I'm going to explain um, everything that the trifold board needs to have and give you some tips and tricks to make it successful. Your trifold board is basically the stage in which all your research is going to be showcased on. So just like when somebody is designing a play, they need to make sure that the stage design, the set design is really good. The props, the background, the colors, the lighting, all of that. In the same way, your trifold board needs to have all of those aspects that will help showcase your message and your research and make everything make sense. So your trifold board from the colors to the font to the symbols, everything that goes on it needs to match your message. It needs to match your driving question, it needs to match your relevant resolution, and it definitely needs to match your generalizations about your conflict and everything about your topic that you found, including your student-led research results. So everything kind of becomes one cohesive piece, one unified idea. So we want your trifold boards to have the wow factor because when somebody walks to the gym, you want to get their attention. You want them to stand in front of your trifold board and await your presentation because they're so interested to find out information from you. So here we have the wow factor. Is your trifold board visually and intellectually amazing, right? Do you have that creativity factor? What makes it special? What makes it relevant to the world we live in? What makes it different from an ordinary book report where you would just put a picture of a dog because the book is about a dog, right? This is not what we're doing for Symposium. We want to make sure we have multiple layers of meaning when it comes to our trifold board and our supplemental creative piece. So you want to tap into your skills. Are you an artist, an athlete, a musician, an engineer, a performer? Think about all of these skills you have and collaborate together. Use all of your skills and make this amazing. Does your project have an unexpected twist, a surprise? Does it make people think in a new way? Is it exciting and appealing? Do you have visual or creative aspects that connect with your information? When people look around the entire gym, do their eyes go straight to your project? That's a good one. That means it definitely has a wow factor. Uh, when you present your information, do people learn something new? Does your trifold board tell a story? Uh, what I mean by that is, does it have a message that it's trying to convey? Do people learn something from it? Do you spark interest when people leave your, your uh, presentation? Are they like, wow, are they inspired? Are they more curious about something? Or do they have unanswered questions? That's a good thing. Um, are you and your group members knowledgeable about your research? Are you able to answer questions that they have? Are you using language of the discipline and clearly communicating your ideas? Is your audience part of your project? What do they hear, see, taste, smell, or feel? This is a part of the interactive element that you could incorporate. What kind of mood does your project create? Um, does it illustrate your overall big idea? You need to step back and think and think about this question. What about my presentation makes it one of a kind? What makes it different? What makes it special? So here are um, some of the things you want to do for your trifold board. You want to make sure that your trifold board is a backdrop and a stage for your information. Now a lot of students get very fancy with making their driving question, which is the main question, which usually they put on the top, but you don't have to. So when people make their driving question, you want to make sure that you do not buy things from my Michaels, like those cutout letters that you can buy at the teacher supply store. And we also don't encourage you to just print something out in like size 72 font. We want you to make it by hand. We want the actual driving question itself to be a work of art. It makes your trifold special. It makes it one of a kind. So that no one else in the world has your driving question or the look of your driving question because you um, made it all by yourself with paint, with cardboard, with construction paper and glue and hot glue. You can make it 3D. You can make it 2D. Um, you can make it 
that you can build up, okay? Does it have a 3D effect? You want to make sure that it st stays on top so you have structural supports on the back using tape or um, wooden poles or rollers or things like that. But we want you to definitely make this by hand. Please do not go to Michael's and just buy um, letters. In fact, if you do that, we might not give you the approval sticker when you turn them in on March 2nd. Make sure that your generalizations for your conflict and your the color of your background um, on your trifold board and all of the little uh, elements of your trifold board all connect. Um, something that we definitely also do not want is for you to just go to the teacher supply section and get one of those cute borders and then just stick it on the outside because it looks cute or it, you just have enough space and you want to fill it up. We don't do that. We don't put things for decorative elements. We want to make sure that every decision we make, every decorative element we put in is not there for the sake of decoration, but there because it gives meaning. So we don't encourage you to put borders around the entire trifold board. We do want you, however, to put borders on your information using construction paper that matches your theme, and I'll explain that in a minute. Make sure everything on your board is designed and aligned with your topic. So if you're doing a topic on depression, it wouldn't make sense to put, um, you know, cute little swirly butterflies and flowers and um, fuzzy little warm feeling type of illustrations, right? You want to show the darkness of anxiety or of depression, of stress. You want to use the right colors for that. So you could also look up color symbolism as well. Um, also, please, once again, do not get store-bought decorations. Store-bought decorations are not allowed. This is a very important announcement. Please do not print out pictures from Google Images, stick it on your board, or paste it to the top of your board and call it art. The caliber of projects, the level of projects that we expect of you because we know you're capable of doing it is much higher than that. We want you to create things using your own creativity. We want you to make things. We want everything to be from you, not just something you printed out in one minute and you glued onto your board. The background of your board cannot be blank. You cannot simply just print pictures from Google Images and glue them on your board and call that art. You are not allowed to just have a blank board. There are going to be hundreds of projects in the gym, and every single one of those projects are going to be individually amazing looking because we want you to do your very best. We want you to improve everything and put out your best work. This means that your background cannot be blank. If you have a blank background, you may not get an approval sticker because one of the uh, components on the rubric in order to be approved is to have the wow factor. So once again, please make sure the background of your boards are not blank and please make sure you're no, you are not printing out a Google image and making that part of your art or making that count as your art only. Now, if you want to print that out and then maybe paint over it or incorporate it into your art, you're totally fine to do that. Another thing that we want to um, give you guys some advice about is using blue tape. You can definitely use blue tape to make straight lines because it's painter's tape. Um, you can also uh, use uh, the projector that if your teacher lets you to trace out your letters for your driving question. Because for your driving question, we don't want you to just print something out at, in 72 font and then glue it on your board. That's why we provided cardboard. That's why we, we provided paint and construction paper because we want you to create. Half of symposium is the artwork, the art component. So symposium is both a research project and an art project. So you must make sure that your background of the trifold board is not blank, that you're not just printing out pictures from Google Images and calling that your art, and that your driving question itself is handmade and created and it looks really good and it shows that you tried your best. We want you to use your creativity skills to design these boards. So that's why we need you to create a board plan because without the proposal, without it getting approved, we don't want to give you a trifle board if you don't have a plan as to how you're going to execute your ideas. Um, the second part is a supplemental creative piece. So I'm going to actually go over this a little bit later because we have a wonderful video from Mrs. Pete that goes over that. I decided to put the supplemental creative piece section in a different video. So go ahead and watch GS7-2, which features Mrs. Pete, and I'm in it as well, and we discuss the supplemental creative piece. I wanted to put it in a separate video because it goes in-depth into different ideas that you might 
use as inspiration for your supplemental creative piece and your supplemental creative piece is actually not due until March 9th, which is an entire week after your trifold boards are due. Now, you can still start thinking about it and you can certainly start making it at home. You can actually make your supplemental creative pieces at home. You don't have to do them at school. So you still have a week more to do your supplemental creative piece. Be sure to watch that video because I guarantee that you'll feel a lot more confident and inspired by Mrs. Pete's presentation so that you can be prepared to create an amazing art piece that goes along with your trifold board for your presentation. So watch the next video when you have time. But I do want to focus really quickly on some of the examples from last year. As you can see right here, we have a driving question here, right? And um, this uh, group, they cut out all of their letters and their driving question takes up a lot of their posters that they built up. Then we have these artistic pieces with the two heads that um, talk to each other. Then we have all of their information here. We have all this information here. Um, and notice, this is what I mean by no borders, but um, right here where we have these borders right here. These borders are very important. So we want you to always put construction paper behind all your information, including your QR code, including your gate icons, including your labels. We want that because it just makes your project, your trifold board look so neat and professional and scholarly. If you just stick white paper on the board, it's not going to work as well, okay? Um, here's another one. So this group decided to do a little bit more with their symbolism. So as you can see in the background, do you guys see how they have um, different shades of brown, okay? Or if they go from like pale right here all the way to like the darkest brown because their whole project was on skin color and um, um, how this affects people or it was about lightening your skin and how different communities of color practice this idea of lightening your skin. So that's why they made their background kind of like a gradation of skin of different skin colors, lightening and darkening. Um, once again, they have all of their information completely bordered. Do you see that? Okay, so make sure you put those borders and they just they decided to choose black for a certain reason. Okay, they didn't just choose like red or green. Um, so they wanted to show um, here they have their QR codes. This is for level two students. They have all their SLR results where they explain it. They have their generalizations here. Um, they even incorporated the gate icon, which is origins it, within their question. And they also incorporated different symbols and signs that match their driving question. Now let's look at this group. This group decided to make their background look like um, the Milky Way galaxy. So you can kind of see the detail that they put into that in terms of paint. They also decided that they wanted to put, um, if you look closely, they put um, little LED lights, like that's an LED light, that's one too. So the photograph didn't really capture it very well, but basically they had little stars that were super shiny and bright because they used LED lights that were battery operated and they stuck in the back of their board. They also have here a spacecraft, they have some planets, and then they also have the NASA symbol. And I remember this group, they actually traced every single letter on contract paper and then um, cut it out and they told me it took them like three hours and they had to have their parents help them like cut it out while watching TV for like three hours. Sometimes you gotta enlist a little bit of help with those types of things, right? So we don't want your parents to do your project for you, but if you need help cutting stuff, gluing stuff, or even like, um, you know, using hammers and nails and creating structures for you, especially for the creative piece, that's totally fine. But when it comes to the actual thought and the design of your your um, trifold board and um, your information, the writing, the language, all of that, that needs to come from you. All right, so this is not something that you just ask your mom or dad to do for you. Plus, it'll be very apparent when we see it, and we'll know um, if that was the case. So please don't do that. We also have um, different colors. So we have, this is a, a project from two years ago. So in that year, we did um, different ideas. Instead of generalizations, we did head, hands, and heart. So when you guys do generalizations, you would have to label your generalizations. And do you guys see how they have their icons here? They have different icons that relate to their information here. They have 
unanswered questions on the bottom. So here's a couple of ideas. This is a seventh grade group last year. They did theirs on World War II and the Holocaust. And as you can see, this right here is, I thought was a really interesting way to showcase um, kind of the sim symbol, the gate of uh, a concentration camp. Um, and then we have this wall and they decided to do a wall because these concentration camps trapped the Jewish um, people in and um, when they were persecuted and killed um, in millions during the world during World War II under the Nazi regime. And they did a lot of great things. They added little details like here, they added the little cracks. Um, I like how they made their driving question out of red because red talks, it, you know, symbolizes blood, fear, violence. Those are definitely ideas that are present in the Holocaust during World War II. We also have their icons here their um, student-led research, okay? Now, they could have done a little bit better with their borders here. It's kind of messy, so we don't want that to happen. We want you to have nice borders, like this one's really nice. It has a nice, clean, white, black border. I think I remember why this happened. I We said that they have to have borders, so when they first brought it in, brought their projects in, we told them they have to go back and fix the borders. So I think they put paint over it, and then they fixed it, and they brought it back, and then it was approved. So remember, you have to have all of those components completely done. As you can see, there's like all this stuff on the back of the board. Yep, we're going to talk about that later on how you turn in your boards, right? This is what I'm talking about, making your driving question really good and making sure that your background matches everything. Um, here we have some more. So this is a really interesting group. They did theirs on whether or not veganism, it, it conflicts with different culture, cultures. So for their student-led research, this group actually decided to go vegan during the week of Easter and all three students were Catholic so they wanted to keep a diary about their experiences. Notice that they decided to make their board really cool. So we recommend that you do decorate your board like in the back like this area but don't go too detailed because I've seen students go super super detailed and then guess what a lot of their detailed illustrations get completely covered by all their information. So it's okay to you know, have illust actually we want you to have illustrations and be creative and artistic on the background, but not so detailed that everything gets covered up. In fact, this part right here, that's the part that people see, okay? But this group, they were able to show like the green veganism versus the red meat um, carnivorous um, side. So they show the two sides. And then they also, you know how they have ethics. So this kind of looks like the ethics symbol, the diamond with the, di with the um, half, half black and half white. So here they have half green, half red. All right. All right, here we have this group. I like using this group as an example because of their use of glitter. So every year, and you know what? I understand because I love sparkly stuff too. All right, so I get it. Every year we have a situation where we have certain groups who just want to use so much glitter because glitter is so sparkly and beautiful and it like glistens in the sun and it's just so fun to use and it's so pretty. But sometimes if you use it in the wrong way, it can give off the wrong message. Let me see if I have an example of it. All right, actually, I don't. Okay, so last year, I had a group that did an amazing project, and they actually won an award. Theirs was about human trafficking. And in order to show human trafficking, they wanted to show a barbed wire fence. You know those barbed wired fences that look like this in the diagonal way? So what they did was they put a barbed wire fence around their entire trifle board before they put their information on. But they did something really strange. They made their barbed wire fence out of silver glitter. Now, I want you to think about this. Why would it not be okay to make a barbed wire fence out of silver glitter that's all sparkly and beautiful and pretty when your topic is human trafficking? And so that group, I had to tell them to fix it. Thank goodness Mr. Torres, who's a fantastic you guys need to go ask him for help, guys. He's a fantastic mentor, and he can help you pretty much solve any problem when it comes to engineering um, or designing or constructing or making your trifold boards and your supplemental creative pieces. He had a brilliant idea. He got them some aluminum foil, and they made them twist all the aluminum foil into little coils, pretty much, and then they were able to replace it using hot glue. They were able to put it on top of the glitter. So it started to look even better. It was 3D and it was more realistic and still evoked a really sad tone that showed you like how trapped people feel when they're um, trafficked. But in this situation, for this group that did rock and roll, of course they can use glitter because think about it, in rock and roll, the electric guitars are actually they're sparkly, okay? So this is what I mean by you making sure that you use colors and medium 
um, and media and ideas that are completely aligned to your topic, your driving question, and your message. And here they even put some musical lyrics on the back or musical notes in the back. So once again, you can kind of see it's really important to decorate the back of your trifold board in just the right amount of detail. So even if some of it gets covered, people can still see what it is. All right. So those are some examples of trifold boards. Just make sure you read through this entire section here. Please read through this whole thing. Like, we actually follow through with what we mean. When we say that you cannot have decorative elements just to be pretty, we really mean it. And when you bring a trifold board and it looks so pretty, but it has nothing to do with your message, we will tell you it is not approved and you will have to go fix it and bring it back within like five days or whatever your deadline is. So please make sure you follow these rules on page 119. It is very important. The reason why we have these rules is because we want you to be creative. We want you to actually create instead of buy store-bought things and glue it on because you didn't create that, you bought it, right? So make sure your trifold boards are as creative as possible. Use the supplies we have at school. Use the paint, glue sticks, glue guns, cardboard, cardstock paper, wire, um, popsicle sticks, everything that we've, um, we've purchased for you. Use it all because we want you to be the ones who create your trifold boards. Chapter 10, the trifold board, what goes on it. There are a few requirements that you need to be mindful of for what goes on the front of the trifold as well as the back. Now, if you need a refresher, if you go on page 14 or 16, you'll see a diagram of what is required for a level one trifold versus a level two trifold. And on that diagram, you'll also see what goes on the back as well. You could also look at the checklist, which is on pages 15 and 17. But for now, let's look at this overview of what goes in the front. Your entire board needs to be decorated somehow, as I mentioned many times in this video. You must also include your really big idea chart and your ISD and your relevant resolutions map. So basically all your information needs to go on the front of your trifold board. And don't forget the most important question, the driving question. So that's fair enough, that's simple enough, right? Okay. And you've known that so far because we've talked about the relevant resolutions map, the big idea chart, the ISD, the SLR. We've talked about all of that so many times. Now let's talk about the back. You do need three very important required pieces on the back. They could be taped or glued. It doesn't matter. On the back, you need to have the pre-submission mentor's evaluation form. I'm going to talk about what that is. The board tag and the works cited page. Now the deadline for your Gate Symposium trifold is Friday, March 2nd. I know on the 28th, the 6th and 8th graders are both going on separate field trips, so please be mindful of that because the deadline is approaching very quickly. So March 2nd is the deadline. However, we have breaking news. If you come to the March 3rd Gate Symposium Win Academy session, then you can actually turn in your boards on March 3rd. So only for those who attend the Saturday session are going to be given an extra day to turn it in. Where do you turn it in? You turn it into Ms. Park's classroom, 308, all right? So what's gonna happen when you turn it in is we're going to let you know if we approve it or you have to go back and make some revisions. Let's go ahead and talk about what the three components are that go on the back of your board before we discuss what happens when you bring them by March 2nd or March 3rd. The pre-submission mentor's evaluation form is designed to make sure that your mentor knows what kind of project you're turning in and to also create an extra opportunity for your mentor to help support you because if they see that you have multiple things missing, then they would be able to tell you to fix those things before you turn it in. And that's why we're only going to be accepting threes and fours. So if you look on the rubric, there's a four, three, two, one for each of the components. If you have mostly threes and fours, then you should go ahead and try to turn it in into room 308 by March 2nd or March 3rd. Next thing you need on your trifold board is the board tag. Please make sure you fill out everything on the board tag because we need to know information about who you are and what kind of things you need for your trifold board, how much space you need for your extra supplemental piece. 
Um, how many people are in your group if you guys are 6th, 7th, or 8th graders? We need you to incorporate the board tag by taping it on the back on one of the flaps because when we place the boards in the, in the gym, we want to uh, scatter you all over the gym. So we don't just want like the 6th graders to be in one cluster. We want to mix you throughout the entire gym. Another thing that's important about the board tag and the pre-submission mentor's evaluation form, don't worry about cutting it out or making copies. These will be given to your teacher and we purposely color coded everything. So the mentorship um, pre-submission evaluation form and the board tags are all color coded by grade level and that's going to help us organize your trifold boards and also save your teachers some time because they don't have to make copies of those things. And last but not least, on the back of your board, please include a citations or works cited page or bibliography. So basically what this is is a list of all the sources you've used. If you are a sixth or seventh grader, it's totally fine to just list the sources and you're done. What I mean by list the sources, just put the URL and that's fine. If you're an eighth grader, then you must do it in MLA format or APA format and you know what that is. All right. All right, so what happens when you do turn in your board? So on March 2nd or 3rd, Miss Park will, and Miss Romeo and Miss Salas will either look at your board and immediately give you an approval sticker or they will tell you to just leave it on the side because they might have to review it more closely. Then by the following Monday, um, any of those teachers will let you know what you need to fix to get an approval sticker. So the only students who are allowed to keep working on their projects because they have to fix things are the students who turned them in on time on March 2nd or 3rd. Don't try to come on March 8th and show your trifold board for the very first time to one of those teachers. They will not be accepting your board. You must turn in your board on March 2nd or 3rd, even if it's your first draft that's better than nothing, right? And we will give you some pointers and some things you need to uh, make better Think things you need to improve and then you can bring it back in like two or three days and then you'll you'll get your sticker. You can ask some veterans of symposium. They will tell you that sometimes we make people come back and forth four or five times to make their trifolds better and it always um, makes the student feel really happy at the end because they realize wow can't believe I made my trifold board like way better than it was five days ago. So we do have very high expectations only because we know you can do it. So if you do get a notice for um, it's time for revision, then you'll be getting this letter and it'll tell you exactly what you need to work on in the number of days that we're gonna give you to fix it because we want, because we want all groups to be ready to go by March 9th. And that's also when the supplemental creative pieces do because you do need to work on your oral presentation and you have to work on your creative piece and all of that stuff that week. So that's why we have that one week in between the actual symposium week and the week that it's due. All right. Now, I just want everyone to know that Gate Symposium is an experience that is open to everybody. And we're so excited that so many students are participating this year. However, this is kind of like a competition and you must get an approval sticker to be showcased on the night of Gate Symposium. It's just like how when in the real world, when you're competing for a space or a spot, you need to show your best work. So for example, students have, who have already contributed hours upon hours of research, they've interviewed an expert, they've worked on their trifold boards by coming to mentorship, by going on Saturdays. They really just put in all their effort into their trifold boards. Those are the students who usually make it. The students who don't make it are the ones who the day before symposium, they still don't have a driving question or maybe they don't even have a trifold board because they didn't think about starting their trifold board or they did their entire symposium project but they don't have a survey. They have like huge pieces missing where the project is not even close to the requirements that we explained since seven weeks ago, since nine weeks ago. And so those are the students who will not be allowed to be part of the event, unfortunately. We hope that there are zero of those groups. However, 
please understand that this is a very competitive experience. And so we want to keep that level really, really high. And so we encourage all of you guys to catch up and make sure that you can turn in a complete project by March 2nd or 3rd. So here's the oral presentation part. I'm going to go, th go through this one pretty quickly. It's made up of three components, the walkthrough mentorship evaluation forms. You could use these when you walk around um, Mendez and you ask teachers or adults to listen in on your oral presentation and to rate how well you did your oral presentation. And this will give you good feedback on what things to fix because if somebody asks you a question and you don't know how to answer it, then you should think, hmm, maybe I should work on answering this type of question so that on the day of Gate Symposium, I'll be prepared. If somebody says, what's your driving question and you don't know what your driving question is, that's a big red flag. That means that you probably need to go back and study and memorize. If you don't know your research, if you don't know your SLR results, that's another red flag. Another thing that we included are note card questions. So there are a few questions that we would like for you to prepare. And we included them in English and Spanish because if you speak Spanish or a different language, you should try your best to tr uh, to present your information in that other language only if you can. If you cannot, that's totally fine. Do it all in English. But we always encourage students to use their home language or another language that they speak because it just shows off how amazing you guys are. And last but not least, in the few days leading up to Gate Symposium, we opened the gym for only students who are being part of the event to come and rehearse. We don't open up to it up to the whole school because sometimes we've done that in the past and sometimes what happens is the trifold boards, um, be when there's too many people, they get knocked down and we're still fixing them because they already get knocked down even if people aren't there. Um, so it's very important that only students who have approval stickers rehearse in the gym and when you rehearse you can judge each other so you can't but not in a bad way in a good way in a constructive criticism way so you can give this evaluation form to your friends or to your to the group members who are near you and you can have them evaluate your presentation so you can see how well you did or what things you need to work on so there's like four copies of that not because you have to use all four, but just in case you want four different groups to help you. And last but not least on page 153 is everything you have to know from what time to get to the gym, what to wear, how to speak, and all of that stuff. So please make sure you read the entire page on page 153. Now, I am so proud of you guys. Your teachers are so proud of you. We're so excited for what you're going to be able to show us. Um, I hope that you guys work really hard. If you have any questions, make sure you communicate with your mentors. Please remember that if you do uh, decide to turn it in on March 3rd, you still need to attend the March 3rd Win Academy, and you can get a permission slip from Ms. Park, Ms. Salas, or Ms. Earhart, or, or actually any of your symposium teachers who will have, who will have um, permission slips for you. So make sure you, you prepare and do your best. Thank you, Mustangs.